there, there are supplements that uh, I take and I, I say in full disclosure, I'm not a doctor, so I, I don't recommend anything, but I do uh, believe in the science and what the science says from my lab and others is that there are ways to take certain supplements that could lengthen lifespan. So in, in my book, I list it all out on page 304. So if we don't get yep. to, to, to go through each one, people can check it out. But the main ones that we've worked on that I, I take every day, uh, you mentioned resveratrol. I still take that since 2004 uh, and I'm still alive. Um, and it's been shown in oh, now many clinical studies in humans and countless mouse studies that it protects against inflammation and cancer and, and Alzheimer's. So it's, it's a good one. Um, the other one that I take is an NAD booster. So NAD is a chemical that's in our body that is needed for chemical reactions. Without it, we're dead in 30 seconds, but we make less of it as we get older. And so NMN is a molecule, stands for nicotinamide mononucleotide. Um, so I take that to raise my NAD levels to where they were when I was young. And the reason for that is that the enzymes that I study called sirtuins are, they work to turn on the body's defenses against aging. And as we, as we get older, because there's not enough of this NAD fuel for them, they do less work. And so the idea, which has been worked out in mice, but not proven in people yet, uh, is that by raising those NAD levels, uh, my body will fight aging like it did when I was young. And that includes diseases of aging. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you know, I'm still, I'm still alive um, and the clinical trials are in progress. So I'm hoping to have some positive results to talk about um, probably by the end of the year. Well, I'm glad you brought up uh, NAD because I'm a big uh, NR fan, right? So, um, and NAD uh, pre, uh, for, for, for this. Now, and you talk about, N you talk about N, but it, basically NMN a lot. What is the difference between uh, NMN and NR? And does this, like, which scientifically is better? Because I was told, I was kind of like, all the research I've done is saying that NR is way more effective because it gets into your system easier because of the smaller molecules. That. All right. Well, I don't want to jump into a, a legal fight here. Um, there are some, there are vested interests involved, uh, though I don't sell any supplements. So you can trust me as a scientist. Uh, so. The, the way it oh, works is that NR I did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so NR is a is a, a molecule similar to vitamin B3 um, and the body turns it into NMN and then NMN is turned into NAD and NAD is the one you want so they're very similar they're, they're just both precursors to NAD uh, and the body will convert both into NAD uh, I've done or helped supervise enough clinical trials that I know NMN will raise NAD levels um, one and a half to twofold in the bloodstream of people uh, without any any negative, so in, without any question. Um, I haven't tested NR side by side, so I can't get into saying scientifically which one's better, uh, but I can say NMN works both in the mouse studies that we've done um, and the human clinical trials for raising NAD. And this debate about which one's better because one raises NAD and the other one doesn't get into the body. Uh, well, I know that that's wrong because I've seen clinical trials for the past two and a half years. Um, what we need to have really is side-by-side -side studies of the two molecules, NR and NMN, given to mice and given to humans, and to look at the outcomes, you know, are there benefits. Um, until any of those are done, and they haven't been, um, I think it's it's premature to be claiming one's better than the other. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know idea that you were in a, a legal battle. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make, make it uncomfortable. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not. It's just a, a highly lit litigious space. Um, and there's a lot of vested interests uh, in that area. Um, I'm, I'm not selling anything. So I, I think uh, I'm just going by the data. Uh, there are also some professors who are involved with selling supplements that have strong personalities. Um, they're on social media if you ever want to check them out. Um, but yeah, it's, are it's they? a hot I'm topic. Write them let's, down. let's put it that way. It's a hot topic. Well, because, you know, like, you know, I live in L.A. And 
Uh, NAD is like a, you know, people get all the NAD drips and, you know, those are too, those IV drips is like a really big thing. Yeah. And, um, you know, I've been hearing about, N you know, I hear about NAD all the time. I've been taking, I've been taking it for two years, you know, longer, maybe even. And I never even heard of NMN before, you know, until, you know, a friend of mine were talking about you. And I was like, what's the difference? And, and it's like hard to even say NR, how I can't even pronounce that, N M N N. Like there's so, I didn't realize there's all these other like legalities around it. Um, do you think the IV works or no? Uh, well, I would love to see some publications. Um, and you, you always need these placebo controls because it's, it's very easy to feel better after something's given to you. So that's the scientist in me talking that I don't know the answer. But I can tell you an anecdote if you want, um, a pretty funny one for what that's worth. Uh, so I, I went it's to a, a... Well, it's a story. It may make you chuckle. That's about it. But I, I went to a, a very famous person from Hollywood who uh, I won't say the name of because I don't think they'd appreciate it, but someone who's been on TV for you know many, many years. Um, as well as movies. And so I was at their place and uh, they said, why don't you try this NAD injection uh, from my doctor? So I talked to the doctor who was there at the house and uh, went by the next morning. It was early. I was feeling pretty rotten, 7.30 in the morning. And I had I suffered for over a year of having a spasm, or I would say a continual cramp in my uh, piriformis muscle, which is one that goes through your, the hole in your yeah. hip bone. Uh, because I wrote a book and I was sitting down for two years and I, I didn't exercise much and I could barely walk. I was limping and I'd been limping for a year with a lot of pain. And I went to get this injection and it was straight into that, into the muscle nearby the piriformis. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I didn't think it would work. You know, so the, here's the skeptic in me. I'll, I'll do it for the sake of my friend because they really want me to. Uh, and I felt tingly. I felt that there was something going on. I, I walked out. Um, that afternoon, I was at the airport flying home, and I was you know, almost skipping in the way I was walking, and I couldn't figure out what was different. And it, it took me a lot of thought as to real to realize that that pain had gone away, and it stayed away. It's never come back. And that's despite me doing physiotherapy and exercise and massage to try and get rid of this pain, and it wouldn't go away. This one injection seemed to be the answer. Really? And that was just an NAD injection? Yeah, it was. But it's, you know, all, all, all my professor uh, colleagues, please don't judge me. I'm not saying that was a, a, a clinical trial. And I'm not even saying that's proof of anything. Uh, but it is curious. That is. So are, do, you get these, do you get these NAD IVs then and all these other type of, like, how do you take, are you taking no, a supplement or how are you doing it? Now. Yeah, I, I'm taking NMN, NMN capsules that uh, that are similar to the ones used in the clinical trial. Wow. So can I, can I ask you a question also? In your book, I, you also talk about it. And my doc, one of my doctors once um, um, wrote a prescription for metformin. And you talk about it, metformin also. Like, what does metformin do? And why, are, why should people take it? And do you still take it? Um. I Take it maybe a few days a week. Um, oh, I, okay. I really think it's got a good chance of being a longevity drug. There are studies of tens of thousands of people who have taken metformin for their type 2 diabetes, for their high blood sugar. Um, and those people actually are, on average, longer lived than people who don't even take the drug and don't have type 2 diabetes. Right. So that that's stunning. Uh the other thing is you can look at their cancer rates, heart disease, Alzheimer's and frailty, and those go down as well in the high risk groups. So I, I'm pretty convinced that metformin's going to be helpful beyond type 2 diabetes. So I take it a couple of times, maybe a few times a week uh, with food. Now, the reason I don't take it more times is two, twofold. One is I'm very sensitive to it. My stomach feels uh, sick when I take it. That's why I have to have it with food. Um, oh. The other reason is that it seems to reduce your ability to, to lift weights um, and and build up muscle. And I'm in the process of trying to get my body back into shape. Really? So, 
exercising on days that I don't take metformin. Why is that, I wonder? Why would that happen? Well, the simplest explanation I can give is that metformin interferes with your mitochondria's ability to make energy, uh, and that chemical is called ATP. So if you're you're not making as much chemical energy, you're going to feel more tired. So you might do, you know, let's say I'm doing um, arm curls. I'll do, instead of 100, I'll do 80. That that would be the issue. Um, and then, really? And then you, you don't get the benefits, yeah. So, okay, so why would that be the case? So I've got a bunch of questions just on that. So why are people not, why don't people know about this? Like my the doctor who like prescribed it to me, um, is like a longevity doctor or whatever. And I didn't take, I, I didn't know anything about it really. So I kind of just took myself off of it. Like I took it for a couple of weeks. I'm like, ah, oh, screw this. I don't even know what this is. And then I saw, I saw it in your book and you know, people like a lot of my friends who are super ed well educated on this stuff are taking it. Why are, why is not more people talking about some of these things and why are not more people taking that? Uh, well, most doctors are reticent to prescribe a medicine if you don't get a disease, haven't had the disease yet. Uh, and so th there's a relatively arbitrary line that says this is type 2 diabetes. Above that, HbA1c, uh, you've got the disease. But if you're below it, right. you don't have a disease, which I find a crazy way to practice medicine. Uh, I assume that it's, it's mostly based on cost and reimbursement, that you can't just hand out medicines. But on the other hand, metformin is very cheap. It, costs a few cents a day. It's available in other countries over the counter um, to anybody. Oh, it is? Yeah. It's just uh, mostly it's the Western world that regards it as a drug. And uh, But, yeah, it's a very safe one. It's one of the world's safest medicines. It's on the list of the World Health Organization's essential medis medicines for humanity. But to your question, most doctors uh, won't give you a drug unless you have a disease that the, that the drug is designed for. And so, but if it's going to help with longevity, what is the, 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 the correlation? Then you can't really do weights or you can't really work out on it. Resist, you can't really do resistance training on it. It's kind of like, a, it's kind of like an oxymoron, right? Like, so what are people supposed to do? Is it just on the days that you take it, you can't do it? I mean. Yeah. I mean, you can do anything. It's not a big deal. You maybe have, it's only a small change, 5% in, in your muscle size. But in that study, those muscles were just as strong uh, and there was less inflammation in the muscle. So unfortunately, what happens, and I see this every day as a scientist, out comes a study, nobody reads it, nobody even bothers looking at the graphs. Someone in, in Reuters or AP puts out a press release or the university does, and it becomes dogma. In, and there's almost no way to reverse that. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm doing podcasts occasionally, but that's not reaching you know, the hundreds of millions of people that you need to reach to be able to turn this around. Uh, my book is helping, I think. Uh, I'm getting a lot of good feedback about that. But it's still hard to reach most people who don't read um, still. Um, so ultimately, it's really up to the media to correctly interpret science. But that takes a lot of work, and they have to put out stories every day, um, and they don't have the time like I do to actually read a paper before writing about it. But you're doing such great things and such cool things. I mean, um, so if we can just, if we can kind of just bounce back and forth here to the reversal of aging. So does metformin help with age? Is it, it may help you live longer, but does it help reverse the aging? Does that do? Yeah, that's a, an unknown. There's some, there's a study where just a short course, I think it was a week of metformin, uh, maybe even less, a few days, reverse the clock. But that's, to me, that, that that's a bit hard to believe. I'd like to see that reproduced. There was another study that was done that was super interesting. Um, was it Greg Fay? He was a professor and Steve Horvath at UCLA. They gave a cocktail to people and it was metformin, uh, is it growth hormone and DHEA? And, uh, and they got an age reversal of two and a half years on average. Now, these aren't big changes. Um, so I don't think metformin is going to turn the clock back 50%, something like that. I think you need this technology that I was describing where we really can reset the clock.